We're here. What's really? Chilling, man. Chilling. Game one in the background, so. Word. Yeah. Why Why do we have hoodies on indoors? Uh, my house is drafty. Okay. Yeah. I feel you. Not trying to turn the heat up crazy. For sure. For sure. Oh man. All right. Yeah, I got a I got adjusted today. You know what I'm saying? So I'm feeling all right. Cool. Cool. Yeah. Shout out to the chiropractor. Man, I'm trying to get you in there. I'm telling you. <laughs> I'm telling you. Nah, man. I, I already I already tried that. That I'm not there yet. You just had the wrong one, that's all. Like trust me, I take you know I take care of you. I wouldn't I wouldn't set you up for no okie doke. Like my, my chiropractor is good. They're both good. I am just need some time to rebuild my trust. <laughs> <laughs> I need some time. <laughs> it's crazy, man. So Man, well, we only got an hour and we got a lot to get to. So let's uh let's cut through all the small talk and let's let's get going. So um can everybody hear us? Sorry, right, I just want to do a mic check before we get started. <clears throat> just uh just say you're good or put a one in the chat and do something. I don't know. Let us know if you hear us, levels are good. We can get started. I don't know if your means I can hear y'all. Okay, yes, okay, everything is cool. Okay, what up, Rich? What up, Bill? What up, Tony? Okay, lots of folks in here. Hello, wife. Desmond in here. All right, big bet. So, we had two major events um, pertaining to hip hop culture uh, happened within the last few weeks. And I think it would make more sense to start recent and move backwards. Um, so I want to talk about um, the untimely, unfortunate, unexpected death of a uh, takeoff from the Migos. Um, he's in Houston, private party. Um, there's an argument there from what i'm hearing it had nothing to do with a dice game like uh early reports said didn't have anything to do with quavo he was actually trying to defuse the situation but you know texas is open carry uh they were also rolling with you know j prince jr and his associates and that can get a little dicey you know knowing what you know about him um and unfortunately some shots rang out and you know, takeoff was hit once in the head, once in the torso that exited his torso, went into his arm, and uh, he died on the scene. He's 28. It's a baby. So, man, first of all, waking up to that news, waking up to news like that is really jarring. Um, I I literally rolled over, and I've decided, like, this really makes me not want to grab my phone first thing. It's a really bad habit, but many of us do it. I grab my phone. It's literally like the first thing I saw when I grabbed my phone was the RIP takeoff. And I was like, wait, what? And I just sat up in my bed. It was maybe like 6, 6.30 in the morning. So um, what were your initial thoughts? Uh, you know, what have you been kind of... <clears throat> dealing with you know pertaining to this what are the first thoughts that came to your mind um trauma economy you know like how much this always sucks us in and and it has like a profound emotional effect on us and it, it it's not just sharing the news it's sharing the video you know sharing different levels of grief and it's kind of like a, a a human experience of trauma particularly for the black community 
um, because we all love hip hop so much. And yet you kind of have to face the ugly side of it. Seems like more frequently now. So it's just like once we start kind of publicly airing our emotions and um, all range of emotions, not, you know, just sadness, like anger and frustration, fear. It's just a, it's just a heavy time, man. This is a heavy experience. And um, I didn't see too much policing. I don't know if you saw that. You saw anybody policing, like, you know, what people should feel, what people shouldn't feel. Um, I think I saw somebody put up an apology post for, for like, trying to go the direction, like, chastising the community and, you know, of course, sliding in the Jesus stuff. Like, you know, I didn't see a lot of that, though. Um, so it, it at the end of the day, man, like, as a griever, I feel like we're all grievers. It's just not my my it's not my place to judge how people are experiencing that. It's just that the shared experience visibly, vocally, what we're seeing is just a lot, bro. It's a lot. So I'll be honest with you, man. Like I I I checked out for a while, man, because I just couldn't I couldn't navigate all of that. You know what I'm saying? Like I was I was I was sad to to see this again, but I think for the first time I started really like analyzing how um, desensitized I have been, mm. you know, like, wow, like, why is this not like pulling anything profound from me at this point? And that's kind of like another level of the sickness. Mm -hmm. So I just had to just get away from it to like really feel it. In a in, and I felt what I felt like was an appropriate way for me, but hip hop man strikes again, like the culture strikes again, this narrative strikes again, and it's just a lot for people to deal with. How did you feel? Man, I was sad the whole day. Um, like I, I, this is the first time. Like I, it reminded me of when, um, I text you on a Sunday. And I came to your church to hear you preach and, and Juice World had died the night before. And you were kind of, uh, so you went in the pulpit and I don't know if it was before or after you preached, I think it was before, um, where you kind of shared uh, a brief overview of who Juice World was and why there are going to be people um, in the congregation that that's gonna like pull on the strings that people are gonna be bothered by this we know that the church and hip hop has like a really uh, weird relationship. And I remember when I was listening to you and I was just like, I was in, I was, I was sitting in the pews, like crying, like sobbing, like uncontrollably. And I didn't cry for takeoff, but this was the first time I felt a burden for like hip hop culture. Mm. And mm. in this kind of way, like a spiritual burden, Mm -hmm. Um, like y'all, like man, when I when I came into, you know, uh, Christian culture, um, I kind of felt like I was like the hip hop representative, like I was trying to like blend the two worlds together, and I didn't really know why. I think it was mostly because I didn't want to like listen to the Christian hip hop that I was subjected to, but I realized in hindsight it was because I have a burden for hip hop culture and the people who participate in it, the artists, the producers, the fans, the platforms, like I really care. Um, so regardless of subject matter and what, you know, what we believe in and all that stuff, like, bro, this is why I started CRS. Um, yeah. Because I wanted to educate and I wanted to provide a platform so that people could understand that like this music, it means so much to so many people in so many different ways. And with a lot, like within the last four years, it's just turned up from like XXX, Tentacion's death up until now. It's just like, dog, it's just nonstop. And um, I think what bothered me the most about this instance was I liked Takeoff because 
he was very unassuming. He was very much to himself. Um, he just he just clearly like loved to rap and be around his uncle and his cousin. And um, when you hear the story about what happened, you hear about people, you know, you look at PNB Rock, it's like people are like, dang, you shouldn't have been at that Roscoe's wearing your jewelry. That was wrong. You could look at somebody like a Nipsey and say, yo, why were you in your neighborhood and you didn't have your security with you? Look at X, why were you carrying a Louis Duffel with $25,000 just with one other person? But by all accounts, like, Takeoff was not an aggressor. He was chilling. He was in the back. He was low key. They had security. The, the people who were there <laughs> are supposed to be the ones they quote unquote checked in, right? So that, that, you know, nullifies a lot of that, that culture and that jargon. And it's like, <clears throat> the fact that, and I could really go and get into some personal stuff why I believe this, but I'm going to make it, I'm going to say this and lead it to make a statement. But the fact that it was in that close of a vicinity, people, uh, you know, call people up, start shooting. And out of everybody who gets hit, two other people were wounded. But the only person who dies is like a rapper. Like, I I wholeheartedly believe and just know this for a fact that there is a demonic agenda against hip hop and hip hop culture. And this, I mean, we have plenty of evidence that supports that, but I've never felt more burdened to like, not only be an ambassador, but to also intercede for the culture, because this is just, this is getting ridiculous. And I feel like the OG side of me that I've been resisting and fighting for so long, because I'm not old, <laughs> has now caused me to like, yo, I gotta, I got, I gotta, I gotta do something for these young boys, man. These are kids. These are babies. You know what I'm saying? And somebody just, and regardless of all the narratives we could talk about, like, you know, somebody really just lost their life. Like, he just, he's died. He's not coming back. And that sucks. Yeah, bro. It's, it's just sobering how the news cycle will just keep going. Um, you know, so I, I did want you to kind of, I guess, if you wanted to get into your personal example. Yeah. I mean, it happened with this. It happened with, uh, I forgot just that quick. I'm glad you asked me because I would have forgot. Um, so this happened with a, um, a family member. So um, he was in the neighborhood. He was out chilling. He ended up getting into it with somebody, getting into it with a female. Female says, yo, I'm about to go get my brother. He's like, go get him. I don't care. Do something. She leaves, he comes back. Um, her brother comes, he shoots in the air. So he's just scaring people off. They're on the corner. So there's a bunch of people in there on the corner. He shoots in the air. Everybody scatters. According to forensics, the bullet went up in the air, ends up hitting a light pole, comes down, strikes him in the eye, kills him. He's the only person who dies. And it just so happens that it's the person who kind of like was a part of the initial conflict. And I've always believed that as like coincidental as situations like that are, they're also very intentional. Um, just because I believe and understand that there's a spiritual world. Mm -hmm. And knowing what I know additionally, um, I 100% believe that that was intentional. And regardless of whether, you know, old boy was just shooting. I really don't think he was aiming to kill. I think he was just aiming to scare. And he ends up murdering somebody. And this just reminds me of when you listen to the story, reminds me of Takeoff when you listen to the story. Like, nobody was aiming for Takeoff. He's literally the only one. He gets hit in the head and he dies, like, pretty quickly. Mm -hmm. I just don't think, I just don't think that that's an accident. Mm -hmm. and, that, and that bothers me. Yeah, very, I mean, it's just a complete tragic situation from especially from the standpoint of hearing like his his nature is chilling he was never really big talker you know instigating anything he kind of like low-key into himself and to just be a bystander and again like it's 
you know, man, it's this culture, man, and the culture amplified by social media. Like, bro, like, what would what a social media would would have been around during like '90s hip hop? <laughs> you know, talk about violence and stuff happening that just becomes street tale, street legends. But you know, people got snuffed out during periods of time where there was just no coverage around it or no ability to like follow it around live. Right. So now, like, you know, we get to interact with that and people respond to it openly and publicly, like as it circulates. Of course, the video, I didn't watch the video. I don't know if you watched it. No, I didn't. But, you know, that's just getting normal. Like to just see video on the scene of your, I guess, favorite artist or whoever right there just, you know, like that's, I don't know if there's any kind of codes of respect or principles, you know, that people operate by, but like, man, that's, that's crazy that that's literally an instinct for people to just feel like this is the first thing people need to see. So I, I had like, for me, like I said, bro, I had to, I just had to distance myself from all of that, man, because when things like this happen, people mourn together and they grieve openly but I think that they're grieving this situation because they're just already sad. Like, you know, and they go to the internet just to just project more of that sadness. And it's crazy, man. Like people are really in pain and scared. You know what I'm saying? And that's why the, the whole trauma economy thing just makes sense to me because it just keeps getting pushed out, pushed out, pushed out. And, you know, people think they're doing therapy. <laughs> 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 nah dog nah you're not doing therapy mm -hmm. man like you you are out maybe you're medicating but it's just it's it's not it leaves us this is my issue bro it leaves us in a hopeless place mm -hmm. that's my issue like because you get people who just say man we gotta do something and there's no answers right like, generally speaking, like, I can't believe this happened again, and I can't believe we were unprepared again. That's right. And it's that, that is the probably the most tragic cry of all, is to not have hope on the other side of something terrible happening and not have a plan for it not to happen again or to happen less often. And really kind of like what's behind all of this is the fact that we, we mourn the most visible version of that when for many communities it's just normalized. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So it, it becomes this common this internal conversation that we're having in the culture, you know, in hip hop, whether it's, you know, just kind of analyzing what's the most popular music out right now, or it's just kind of like trying to understand the younger version of yourself and, and then maturing through all of that to get to the other side. I saw somebody say something about um, how Puff, like, you know, in his Joker costume, <laughs> how he de-escalated, you know? Mm -hmm. he Like, he was he was getting to the street version. He, he came right out of Joker character. Oh, you talking about when he got into it, old boy? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah so he was in full Joker costume character, and then a moment, like, transpired where he changed. Mm -hmm. and, hey, you want to get to it? I got this fake gun in my hand. Like, I'll bust you over the side of the head with this. And then he had to just, like, de-escalate and say, I'm out here for love, you know? <laughs> <laughs> but <laughs> but I got to give him credit for that. Like, he really, he really just kind of redirected. But this is a man in his 50s. Right. You know what I'm saying? Look, like, look at look at what all that he's experienced to get to that point to be able to do that. Bro. And so these guys aren't the ones who necessarily preach to the younger people. They are they are actively experiencing this process of maturity in later years. Right. You no. Know? And so the youngsters, you can't blame the super youths for just going to the highest level out the gate if the older OGs are just now getting emotionally mature. Right. So the hopelessness is this is disturbing because I think 
sometimes we expect too much out of ourselves. Mm-hmm. You know, and we and we we kind of interrogate, you know, what we didn't do when we have to like really just kind of pace this thing out. You know what I'm saying? Because I feel like there are people doing things to redirect the narrative, but they won't get as much visibility as the trauma. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? So I think there's there's introspective work we got to do in our community to lift up the right people to, so we don't just stay in a place of hopelessness. Yeah. That speaks to so many different places. Like, I'm just thinking about all of the other people that get to participate in hip-hop culture that are not hip-hop themselves. Mm, yeah. Um, and so when you talk about de-escalating, I think of people, I think of spaces and brands that, like, um, they don't benefit monetarily off of de-escalation. Right. You know, we we talk about organizations that, uh, you know, and platforms and, uh, uh, you know, self-imposed pastors and all this stuff that, you know, position themselves. Anytime a Black body drops, they're on the front lines marching and they get in that honorarium to come out and speak at your event. Um, I think about everybody pulling out their phones when people, when something happens because TMZ is paying for that footage. Um, and they know they trying to get to it. You look at the economy and you look at where people are and, you know, never has it been this bad in this era um, where we're seeing more and more like, you know, robberies on, on camera and, you know, people just really down bad and trying to, you know, figure it out. I don't know, man, like, because the, cause these kids nowadays, like, there's a desensitization that is there that you talk about your desensitization of just grieving, like, you know, there's a generation of kids now where, like, they grew up in this era. They don't know nothing else, and they don't care. They don't care. It's different, bro. It's different. And, you know, like, as OGs, because we are OGs, whether you want to accept it or not, like I don't, I, I don't even, I don't even like fight with that no more, man. Like I accept it because somebody has to take a position. I still feel like there's a generation younger than us that can connect with that generation better than we can, right. and we can connect with that generation younger than us, um, and and just like you know, get to it, like get the conversation started. Because, you know, it is a spiritual issue. You know, this is, everything's not about, you know, medication or science. Um, it's, it's like, you know, the whole person is spiritual too. Mm-hmm. And there's like a darkness that makes you not care. You know what I'm saying? That's, that's a spiritual condition to where you, you can't feel things that are really meaningful uh, in nature. You know what I'm saying? Death and life. Like that got to mean something. Yeah. Exactly. So it's 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 for it's for us to get to it, and and I'm you know I'm thankful that I know some people who get to it, and they encourage me and helps me to stay um, balanced, you know, so I don't just feel like totally apathetic. Like man, what can be done? Like you know, the government ain't about to change this, and we definitely want the police up in here, you know, abusing us more. And um, it's 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 like I know great fathers. You know what I'm saying? I know great father were trying to change that narrative. And so that's why I said I need to get some space because the worst of us is going to get exalted right mm-hmm. now. And that's not the total picture, even though there's tragedy that we're still working through. Like there's active tragedy that we're working through. This is still happening in our city. Right. Like people have been getting killed in Columbus, Ohio. That's right. At- at alarming rates, you know what I'm saying? Like in the street. So it's, it's, it's like, man, you look at a group like Amigos and their influence on pop culture. And there seem at least at one point seem to be a time where you get so successful, where you're distance yourself from that danger. Mm-hmm. Right. And this just reminded us that nah, no. you, you, you know, you still close to it. You you can you can you can be the aggressor and get murdered. 
you can just be in the vicinity and get murdered. Yep. That that danger is still present. Um, and you know that that reminds me of the point that you you made earlier about like folks is still sad and it's just like compounding projection and process on top of the sadness that also has not been dealt with. Mm -hmm. And I think that's like I feel like that's a reoccurring theme. Thought that's the foundation of this show. Mm -hmm. It's just like, what are we doing? Where are we? And let's process this. Mm -hmm. um, and how do we process this? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, just, and just the fact that like so many people either don't know that they have, so many people just don't, that doesn't click for them. They're just like, yo, I'm, I'm down bad. Like I'm down bad and I just got to figure it out. I got to get to it. And you're just moving and moving and moving. So, you know, we'll be having this conversation again in a few months. Who's that's, those are the things that my brain thinks about like, dog, who's next? I don't know, man. And this may be a good segue into the Kanye conversation, but I think there's some things shaking up internally in the black community right now. That's, that's making us look inward a lot more and, um, and have some conversations at the family table that, you know, need to be had and have been needed for some time. And I think, you know, unfortunately, this tragedy has, folk, has forced us back to the table again because mm -hmm. I'm hearing some people's talk strong, like, you know, black men need to go back and take back the community and like what what does that look like does that look like a reinvention of the black P panther party you know does that does that look like releasing some gang leaders from jail to mm -hmm. help get some order out on the streets yeah you know what i'm saying like what are we tangibly talking about <laughs> that's that's the that's the part that I really feel like is the conversation at the table, because we can't just be talking in theory and quoting W. E. B. Du Bois like you know we can't do that. Like, right? Who who's going to work at this school? You know, who's going to be a deacon in your church? You know, who who is going to work at the rec center? Who's going to sign up for the youth program and teach the kids a craft? Like the whole thing about literally being next to the solution really causes you to analyze your immediate surroundings, your relationships. You know what I'm saying? Like, because the relationships are going to help give you access to those answers. That's right. You know? And, and I think, again, the hopelessness comes from us feeling like the answers are so far away. Mm. That tangibly do. And we just probably haven't like, had those real conversations or been pushed to have those real conversations until something like this happens. I can tell you what it ain't. It's definitely not a bunch of niggas marching downtown in suits. <laughs> <laughs> I had to get that off. I'm sorry. I had to get that off. That's what it's not. But that you make an excellent point. The answer, the solution is in small steps. We talk, she was, People say the devil's in the details. The Bible talks about little foxes. Like, it's not this. I think people are expecting this big. This, this, is, a, this is a conversation we had on, on Clock Radio Speakers. We talked about, um, like, celebrity, like, leadership. I was talking about it on my YouTube last week, too, like how celebrities are the new leaders. And I think we're looking for a Malcolm, a Martin, a W.E.B. Du Bois to, like, stand up and say, this is what we're doing, black people. We would never accept them. We would never accept Malcolm in this time. You know, we would we would never accept these people that we champion and quote and make t-shirt graphic tees of. Like what they were talking about, I was literally just listening to Malcolm X talk about how celebrities are puppets. And like he was laughing when um, there was, I guess, some celebrity co cohort that came together to, to classify themselves as leaders of the black community that supported Dr. King. And he was laughing when he was naming them. Mm -hmm. He was 
we got actresses and, and comedians. And he said, name me a white counterpart where their leaders are actors and comedians. Like, they they force us to think of our leaders in those veins only versus like actual people with influence in communities to translate to tangible results yeah. like th that that is it that's like from malcolm's perspective that's a strategic way to cause us to continue to run on this hamster wheel yeah so i'm like we get to Kanye. Out the gate, man, I'm not looking to Kanye to give me all the answers of life, bro. Right. Yeah. Like, I mean, like, literally, I positioned my mind and my heart to extract good information where I can, identify my disagreements, and move on. Yeah. Like, here's the, the old way it used to be said is, eat the meat and spit out the bones. That's right. <laughs> That's what we used to hear growing up. Like, and we used to hear that all the time because we used to hear people say some crazy stuff. <laughs> <laughs> right. Whether it be in our family or whether it be in church, whether it be on TV, be like, yeah, that was some crazy stuff. Or we acknowledge like, man, I didn't expect that person to say that. That's what's up. Yeah. But we think it's like the ultimate like end of the relationship if we disagree with somebody strongly right and, and that's that's not a relationship that's a hostage situation mm. you know like i'm holding you hostage to my passions and the moment you leave them then we can't be cool no more and now nah, mm. mm. no relationship that's not real that's right you know what i'm saying like just say you a fan like you know just just like draw that distinction like you know for your own mental health so you don't need kanye west to say all of the things for the black community to be okay <laughs> sorry dog we are not going to be okay or not okay based on kanye west that's right we just won't now he can make great points mm -hmm. he can make great shoes mm -hmm. he can make great music mm -hmm. and we can be straight but the fact that, like, people think that our entire relationship and social mobility is based on the statements and the actions of celebrities, bruh, I'm not going. That's a fact. I'm not going. Yeah, I mean, you make an excellent point that, but that's the, oh, it's so many things because it's, it's, it's the mindset. I, when I think back to Malcolm and Martin, I feel like, the world was a lot smaller. So it was easy for one person to show up and say something. And I also think that like our mental health and our understanding of the human experience maybe wasn't what it's become. It's developed and evolved over the years. So now there's things that we have to consider that they didn't. So, um, I think, but I think we're still as black people looking for that. We need this one person to be everything. And to your point, it's not going to be a black man, a distinguished black man in a suit. You know what I'm saying? It's also, you know, it may not be a, a, a pastor. Um, the people that we trust or that we position ourselves to trust are musicians and celebrities and people with influence and power and numbers. So then it almost feels like when Kanye says something out of bounds that now some black people feel like we have to um, make excuses for him or justify like, man, you know, that's just, you know, he, he's, he's kind of, you almost have to like pre-qualify. Like I disagree with this. However, like you're, you're making all these excuses, but it's getting in the way of the things that are being said, the points that are being made, and the additional conversations that we need to have. You know what I'm saying? Like, there's no conversation about Jewish media and the elite. All of the conversation is about anti-Semitism. -sem is that it? Yeah. 
Okay, I said I said it right. Finally, I, I was I was messing that up on my stream last last week. <laughs> <laughs> so, but it gets in the way of well, let's have the conversation instead of just dismissing it and saying, well, that's not the case. Um, let's have a talk about the elites and and you know if the elites really do control the 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 powerful black voice. Um, I feel like it's an open. Kind of, here's the other thing. Kanye West saying this is not this big revelation, and this is the first time I'm hearing that. I've been hearing that for years, since I was a child. For years, bro. Yes. As a child, I heard this and just didn't know. Like, what do you mean media? And my first instance of it was when Viacom purchased BET. Yep. And Viacom owned MTV and Comedy Central and all these other spaces, but BET was independently owned. So you had BET News. You had like just different aspects of black culture that that black entertainment television um, shed light on. And so then when it became uh, uh, when it was bought out by, you know, a conglomerate, um, I can't sit up here and tell you that Viacom was Jewish owned. I can't tell you that. But I can tell you that all those things that that um, that shed light on the totality of the black experience through BET went away. And it became more Comic View and 106 in Park and, you know, Rap City. And these are all great shows, but there was no voice on politics. There was no voice on culture. There was no Teen Summit went off the air. There was no voice for the kids, like none of that. And I just, I just, I, I've lived enough and I know enough to know that, that that's not, uh, that's not by, by happenstance. So can we have the con so can we have the conversation? I'm asking rhetorically, but because you know, look at what look at what happened last night with Kyrie. So it wasn't that the conversation is not the conversation that that the media is putting on is oh Kyrie posted this anti-Semitic book. The conversation that I want to know is why on inside the NBA, Shaq and Charles Barkley just threw this thing under the bus. And call them all types of names, and it, it doesn't. It it's not lost on me that they just announced that all of them signed an extension. And, and Charles Barkley, who's been saying I'm going to retire at this age, just got a boatload of money. It's not lost on me that immediately after Kanye loses, he said he lost two billion dollars in a day, and everybody drops him off. Now all of a sudden, Forbes, who's never acknowledged Kanye West, Forbes that you have to pay for it to to be acknowledged, you got to pay for that. How do they track all of your money? You have to tell them. You know what I'm saying? Nobody, nobody in here knows how much the other person has in their pocket right now. So why do why does Forbes all of a sudden have all these all this access to, to celebrities' money? But soon as Kanye is no longer a, a billionaire, who do they put in that place? Puff. Who what does Puff own? Revolt. What was Drink Champs on? Revolt. I just don't like it's this is not a these are not crazy statements to make at all. So can we have the conversation? Not you know, not if people are gonna be in chamber. Like to me, this is barbershop conversation. Like this is the stuff that black people have been talking about for years. You know, it's just whenever somebody gets out in the public, we be getting scared of being embarrassed in front of everybody. See that you worried it better than I did. Exactly. Like we've been we've been doing this, bro. Like, we didn't know about the Hebrew Israelites. We didn't we didn't heard about all of these different theories and thoughts. <laughs> in our family spaces in our in our quiet environments like you know people passing weed around like you know just talking about wild stuff you know mm -hmm. what I'm saying and you get out in public and be like <laughs> the first time in people's entire life they said anti-semitism ever right. i like, can't even say it because <laughs> i've never said it Bro, it's like it's like copy and paste outrage. Like, you know what I'm saying? Bro. Like, bro, sound it out. No, here's the problem. Here's the problem. And that that excellent point, because black folks was offended for too long. Oh, y'all just not finna sit up here and be offended oh for two years. Oh, y'all got the whole year? Y'all got all of 2020? Oh no, 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 no. We got we gotta get in on this. You call this a trauma economy and it's the trauma Olympics. Like I'm trying to out, I'm gonna out pain you. Nobody, let me just say this. I'll, this is Taylor Gray, 
thoughts and points made from this perspective do not necessarily represent our mind. I let cool. I, f I trust you. No one is ever going to win the oppression Olympics over black people. Ever. That's not even crazy to say. Not crazy to say. I get the American Indian plight, but the way black people are regarded across the entire planet in whatever kind of condition. You want to talk about Aborigines in Australia. You want to talk about the continent of Africa right now. What's happening on the continent, the motherland. Wherever Wakanda is, it ain't strong enough. Like, what's <laughs> happening over here? What's happened with the, 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 the South American Black community in the political structure in places like Brazil? Bro, this is not just like a, 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 like a flamboyant statement to be controversial. We have stories for centuries of the ways that we have been oppressed. We are the only ethnic group in this country who have never received reparations. You want to talk to me about being offended based on remarks. We are actively getting killed in the street. <laughs> like, I, I'm, I'm sorry. Like, I want to have compassion. I believe in some semblance of solidarity, but it has to be tangible. I am not going to share the same pain and outrage for other communities while we were actively involved in oppression, enslavement, brutality, everything being forced against our kids, including the media direction, including power structures. I'm sorry. I'm here to help and serve Black people as much as I can with whatever resources, whatever commentary, whatever music, everything. I am trying to help my people, not at the expense of other of other folks and the love that God has for every human on earth. But I am right here feeling this as a black human on planet earth. Black, not literal color, black social experience, historical data, things that we can actually measure and see what's going on in society. So I refuse to participate in the oppression Olympics. I refuse. I'm sorry. Like we have active reasons to be upset and to respond with pain. Now, that doesn't mean when you respond with pain, you say everything the right way, but right. you contextualize what you're hearing. That's my one well, other issue that I have with, with, with Kanye is we as a society, and I know social media is not designed for this, we don't practice active listening well. No, nope. we, we don't listen. We, we say that the clip is everything that this person is. We don't go listen to the three and a half hours, the multiple three and a half hours. When you speak for over 10 hours, you say a lot. So you will not reduce me to 15 seconds or to somebody else's interpretation of the 15 seconds and then say, that's all you are. And if you agree with anything, anything this person said, then you are Hitler, bruh. You not living on planet Earth. The fact. You not living here. And and I'm, I'm like personally, I I just I'm not going to interact with that kind of fear, that kind of uh, self righteousness, in a way where it makes it makes it feels like my identity is at stake. Right. You know, because I know who God made me and who God called me to be, and and I know how to think through everything that's put in front of me without being just completely controlled by everything. Y'all sound controlled. Y'all got the copy and paste email from on high that said anti-Semitism. I ain't said that ever. There's too many syllables. I ain't, I'm a rapper. I ain't never put that <laughs> in <a> crime. <laughs> like, so let's just be, again, I'm here for the family discussion, the table, like internal not for public consumption, not for the white gays to perform so that they like us. Because what you're seeing is that tap dance because them checks, them checks, them pockets will get tapped. Absolutely. You better say this. You about to say, you want to talk about revolution and revolutionaries? There's different revolution and revolutionaries. There's economic revolutionaries now. When you lose, when you lose billions in a matter of days unprecedented bro yeah dog unprecedented yeah yeah
She, that's that is a that is a um, a modified crucifixion. It's a lynching. It's a lynching. This is what we're. I I don't say a lot of this stuff on social media, man, because that's not the place for this kind of conversation, in my opinion. Like in the comment section, um, Noriega it cracked me up when he said, like, <laughs> basically, his justification for the post in the interview. He's like. <laughs> this is drink champs, not think champs. <laughs> <laughs> right. Why that but that's that's the question. Why is Nori the spokesperson or the person who is now held responsible for checking Ye as Ye talked? Nigga is called drink champs. They get the platform. The platform is widely successful. And think about how ignorant this is. They just get on a platform and they drink hard liquor. And talk and, and smoke. And smoke. <laughs> so you mean to tell me that that's supposed to be the person that has a moral compass when they hear something wrong to be like, yo, that's not, that's not right, huh? Man. What? Hey, man. <laughs> it, outrage economy, trauma economy is proper to be upset and angry with high blood pressure all the time. But that goes back to my other point that I talked about you offline is that, yo, I, I, and I've said this on social media, like, yo, none of, the, none of these platforms represent me as a, as a black man. Mm. None yeah. of these black platforms represent anything that I stand for as a black man. Because this is why I gave Nori and Drink Champs a lot of credence is because they were the only people where Kanye felt safe enough to go. You and I talked about this, like, yo, Kanye looks so comfortable. If you watch the first the first interview, he looked so comfortable. He was so comfortable that people he won people back. The first the takeaway from the first Dream Champs was like, yep. yo, like, all right. Yeah. We love, we love you, bro. You know, yeah. Yeah, just come home, right? So, all right. Why doesn't so if that's the case, then why doesn't you know, like God, what else do they? Where else does he go? Million dollars worth of game, breakfast. Club, damn sure ain't going to the Breakfast Club. Where does he go? He's going to all of the places he was supposed to go. He's gone to the mall. He's made stops everywhere. You know, Big Boy. I thought the Big Boy interview was a was a telling interview. Mm. I still rem I still remember a lot of that one, and mm -hmm. like. <laughs> The, the drink champs and it's so enjoyable for everybody and generally speaking with Kanye because he literally just says the first thing that comes to his brain. Mm -hmm. You know, we're used to people being so political. This was the draw for, to, for Donald Trump for a lot of people. Mm -hmm. This is a guy who, whatever you think of him, he's literally saying what's on his mind. Mm -hmm. And we're not used people being so unsavvy with their words mm -hmm. you know so Kanye <laughs> is not being savvy bro it's a re it's a big reason a lot of people gravitate musically mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying like the fact that Kanye is very transparent and vulnerable in his music is what gathers the audience mm -hmm. so you you got to take that for both sides like the stuff that you love and the stuff that you don't it's humanity and i really think that like he he represents this kind of a mirror that people just don't want to look at because he is us just butt naked in front of the united states of america with multi millions of dollars as a black man yeah you know what i'm saying like it's 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 like that level of honesty is jarring you know what i mean because we're just used to people patching it up you know like don't give us too much you know now you got to say the right thing here bro and he literally says that like i know what you guys want me to say i know what you expect i know what it means to be a good boy and you know take the hat off but i don't want to take it off like a kid <laughs> yeah but from at least at least I can feel some measure of like, okay, this is truly what he believes and thinks. Mm -hmm. Whether or not, like, you know, he was wild for the, the George Floyd comment. Like mm -hmm. that 
that was wild, bro. Like, nah, we don't need to hear that. I went back and watched the TMZ situation where he was yelling at the whole – he had Candace Owens in there with him. I'm mm -hmm. like, she's not the one to cape for, dog. Nope. That ain't – like, but you said some real things, too. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? The slavery was a choice, bro. You just put yourself on the grill with that and just added some seasoning. They coming for you when you talk like that. Right. But I'll tell you this, man, and I'll, I'll just make this quick personal reference and, and pass it back your way. As a pastor in the inner city, it's very interesting what ways you have to model listening when you interact with an inner city community. Mm -hmm. Okay. And the way people talk. Okay. Like sometimes people are all over the place, but they're really trying to tell you something. Mm -hmm. So you have to have, you know, patience to like really process what's being said. Mm -hmm. like we're right between the police station and the liquor store. And many a time I'm out there talking to people outside the liquor store mm -hmm. and you have to really listen. Yes, you do. To what's being said. And it's not convenient. It's not pretty. It's not coherent. It's not even all the way in order, but you have to have, you have to be tuned in to really like try to humanize this person right? and not make too quick a conclusion about them because they're in this state in front of you. Right. And if you don't have like that actively working, I'll say for me, it's been, I've been thankful to be able to have that kind of a training ground to prepare my, for multiple kinds of conversations. But I'm saying that experience Man, bro, people who don't know that they're long-winded, you know, people who are just totally inebriated, people who are recovering from whatever kind of addiction or, or recovering from whatever social circumstance, they're going all the way around the block and back just to tell you some key data at minute 56. And it's like, oh, Lord, but that was a heavy one at minute 56. Yeah. So again, like, for me, like I'm, I make space to try to hear as much as I can, eat the meat, throw away the bones. That's what I'm going to continue to do with Yay because I'm not done. With Ye. I'm, I'm still rocking. I'm still listening. I'm still watching the journey because I believe it's leading somewhere that we all need to see. So I'm glad that's the last thing you said because I think a lot of the outrage comes from people who do not have that level of empathy, grace, and patience for other people. And then they get mad when other people express it. Mm -hmm. Like, what do you mean you still, you still rock with Kanye? What do you mean you, you know, like, this idea of like a, this idea of groupthink, I think is really starting to lose its power. Yeah. I'm, I'm seeing. Wow. There was an idea, so the black experience in its totality has always been like just championed. We are so many things. We are so, but when it comes, but there's still like a very universal voice for a lot of matters. Mm -hmm. And I think what situations like this is doing is that it's not separating people, but it's also revealing that the loudest ain't the majority. Bingo. Loudest is not the majority. They are posturing themselves as such um, and you know why they're doing that? It's to your other point. It's to tap dance and soft shoe because they know Massa watching and Massa cutting them checks. But there are more people, and this is a thing that you talked about earlier with, you know, people talking strong. I mean, we look at our, we look at our comment section. We're having independent conversations, like just with people, having conversations with people, something as simple as, so what do you think about this whole Kanye thing? I haven't had one conversation that was as strong in public as it is online. <laughs> and that says to me, yeah, that people are like, wait a minute. And for some people, <laughs> I whole I wholeheart I was I was thinking about this the other day. I was talking to my wife about this. For some people. I think there's going to come a point where you're going to have to repent mm. and your repentance is going to look like you availing yourself to understand. Mm. It's not going to be this big like worship moment where you're on your face crying out, telling the Lord, you sorry. 
Yes. It's you sitting down, looking somebody in the face that you don't see eye to eye with and availing yourself to understand their perspective. Facts. Yes. And, that, and, and I see more and more people doing that, but it's very much like Fight Club. It's like, yeah, I kind of, I'm, I'm not, no, I haven't met one person that is throwing out all of their, their Yeezys. People are still keeping their clothes. That stuff was really expensive and resale has not shot up. So I'm going to keep it. I'm going to keep it. <laughs> <laughs> Even the one, there's a couple pairs I was going to get rid of just because I don't wear them. But I'm like, nah, I'm going to just, I'm going to see where this goes. And then you see, so then you see Adidas announces their collaboration with Balenciaga. <laughs> I'm like, are you kidding me? <laughs> so the two people that Kanye has been in the bed with for the longest time, Kanye has championed uh, Denma, who is the designer of Balenciaga. Kanye and Adidas, Adidas said in their statement that this was one of, their collaboration was one of the most successful uh, in fashion history. And that is a fact. So they just gonna push Kanye out and be like, you know, maybe you and I can go on. <laughs> who who said that on the wire? Somebody said that on the wire. Oh, that was uh, that was when um, uh, Marlo and and uh and Avon talking in the jail. Okay, okay. Yep. Hey, what? wild reference. Hey, it's a but, fact though. But you hit, bro. You hit it. You hit it, man. Like, I I hope you're right about the expression of repentance that just makes people have conversations and listen more, you know, because really when you talk about the, for Christians, for you talk about the walk with Christ or what that means, like literally that's the kind of like spiritual representation that is needed right now. You know, like that's, that's like tangible stuff. Like for somebody to just say, you know what, I do need to listen a little bit more. I'm sorry for assuming that you said something that I didn't truly listen to hear, you know, like that, that's like a transformation process. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like that's you changing from a way that you used to operate and, you know, we'll make, it, it makes us distinct from kind of the climate that we're in. Mm -hmm. So I, I don't, I don't know um, what else is going to come out with this. I just think that there's been some really, <laughs> it's been some really dope and real internal conversations we've been having as black people mm -hmm. over the past couple of weeks and I'm here for it bro like cause some of our contradiction and hypocrisy has just come out just so flagrant and blatant and it's just like yo enough of this man we gotta talk about this you know what yeah. I'm saying like you mentioned earlier the um the, the black suit march there's progression from that you know what i'm saying like there was a response to that event that changed future planning mm -hmm. where internally you know there was a conversation about like what was that for and what we we're trying to accomplish mm -hmm. both parties walking away saying okay this is what we're going to do better you know what i'm saying like that's like bro if we can get to that we had these big open moments this is where i miss the boondocks you know because they will find a way to bring social commentary in a very real way. The Martin Luther King speech, like the, the, the gangs delicious, bruh, like all of, all of it, that stuff that we've literally seen these kind of prophetic mechanisms through media and entertainment. Chappelle show. Yep. Yeah, bro. Like it's, it's their prophetic mechanisms through all of that. <clears throat> but, you know, like you said earlier, if, if we're looking for leaders and we just need somebody to be famous in order to be a leader, then we're going to subject ourselves to all kind of foolishness. Charlemagne is not a leader. Facts. Uh, he, he, he's, he's not speaking for no. I don't know what percent. Maybe I'll put him in the 30s. Maybe he's speaking for 30 something percent of the black community. And most of, them are, rich. Most of them are rich. You know, like who, who, who you talking about? You still talking about Charlemagne? Yes. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, and then on the other side, like Umar Johnson doesn't speak for all of the black community. You know what I'm saying? Like right. <laughs> we we are able to gain from different people at different times, mm -hmm. community, and we bring the best 
of the best to the table and do something with it. Yeah. Not just consume it. Mm -hmm. That's what everybody else does is just consume it. Hopefully we use it to build something better. Yeah. I think that there are a lot of us who are to your point. Like if you say, I don't feel identified through these media platforms, I believe that you represent a large silent population mm -hmm. that is just looking for somewhere to lay their head. Yeah. And that means something has to be created. Yep. Yep. It's not, it's not, it's not active yet. Or it's on YouTube with like 500 followers and it's, and it's being built up. I think, I think that we're in the silos. We're seeing like, I think we're in the silos and we're seeing people that are in the dojo and they like learning and honing their skills. And when it's time, they're going to launch and it's going to take over all this stuff. Because to your point, the fact that we've looked to all of these people and these people have postured themselves, be it politicians, entertainers, we have subjected ourselves to so much trash and malarkey and we've been gotten over on so many times. I think finally black people as a collective are, are starting to be like, yeah, nah, hold up. This ain't, this ain't it. This ain't how, this ain't how I go. Um, let's, let's figure this out. Because it's not an it's not an like it's not a politics. And when I say politician, I, I say that specifically for the politicians that get trumped out as like, "Hey, this is your solution, black people." Yeah, yeah. You know what I'm saying? It's it's not in any of these platforms that are signing with Barstool and Revolt and all these major platforms that are owned by white people that are going to silence because they do not have an interest in the true black voice. It's going to be in independent thought, independent people who avail themselves to make themselves available to their community and whoever they build and whoever they attract. And it's just going to grow and grow and grow and grow. Yep. You know what I'm saying? Like, I, I wholeheartedly believe that that's, that's the future and that's where we headed. Yeah. And I, I think this is the catalyst for that. I do too. Stuff like this, bro, like this, this is a good time for some internal conversation. We got a lot to talk about. You know, we used to have things like the state of the black union or the black community and stuff like Tavis Smiley. That's, that's yeah. other BET programming, you know, yep. like that's gone. And gone. I think Revolt has tried to host some forums and things like that, but we need to see the representation of all the opinions, you know, because- Absolutely. A lot of folks lost me when they canceled Killer Mike. And I'm just like, well, how are you going to cancel Killer Mike? You know what I'm saying? Like, you hey, can... hey, they, be, they be propping him up, too. Hey, well, I mean, if, listen, over the past couple of years, bro, they really got him out of here because he was working with the government down there. Or excuse me, the governor who's mm. against Stacey Abrams. So, mm. so now it's like, you know, he's he's on the rocks. Mm. But that to me just shows like how fragile the ice cube thing, you know, yeah. like, you know, Will Smith. And it's just like, yo, we need to have some conversations, y'all. Absolutely. You know, you ain't about to be getting all of our black fathers out of here, bro. Like, fact. <laughs> fact. you just not going to be doing that. Like, yeah, not, not. and, and it, it, it takes a degree of sophistication to have these conversations and not just be truly emotional about it. Like, I mean, emotions are good. Passion is good, but you got to have some facts and information and some history and then some conviction to get to it. You know what I'm saying? And some, and, humi and humility as well. Yeah. Oh, man, the humility is the humanity. Absolutely. It is. It's like, yo, where was you in your low moment? Like we said before, we said when we were talking about Jesus is king or maybe the progression to Donda, you were like, this is, this is kind of like the publicized sanctification process. Mm, that's all he's like, yo, do you know how many times when I guess I've been saved for 17 years, do you know how many times I've been wilding? Do you know? You know how many times I've said Yo. and done just some egregious stuff in Jesus' name and had to walk it back? The only difference is that y'all didn't see it. It was in a very small silo. You know what I'm saying? It's the only difference. And if you're humble, you can look at 
Kanye and say and hear him say stuff and be like, all right, when he goes out and he says, yo, this is God trying to humble me, you're like, yeah, I get it. I get what it, I'm contextualizing what he's trying to say. Whereas some people will look at the, what, what comment did he say? He said, now I know what it's like to have a, a, a knee on my neck. It's like, I feel like that was an artistic expression in comparison to what it, to what that was. Mm. Where I feel like some people will take that statement as literal, and I don't think that that wasn't meant to be a literal statement. That was an artistic compa was an artistic comparison because he's still an artist. Man. But I think people, but also this is the biggest takeaway is that people are availing themselves to not understand that man. They're going out of their way. They're going hard. Which is the repentance that you're calling for? Is like, listen, like, listen, man. You got at some point, it's just like we got to cut it out. Like, you know, <laughs> like, just, just like, come on, man. Like, again, what is at stake in the black community? You know that you feel like you're fighting for, right? Is it just the image? You know, is it just yeah, the dignity? Yeah, the black excellence. You know. Mm -hmm that doesn't even represent like that image doesn't even represent the full population. You know, like you and I are hip hop. We, we are hip hop adjacent part of the hip hop culture. And, you know, some of these black excellence representations are exhausting. You know, it's just like, yo man, I wouldn't even want to go to that party. You know what I'm saying? Like <laughs> y'all be mad if y'all went to Beyonce's house and it was dirty. <laughs> You walk in there, her house looked like your house on a random Tuesday. Because <laughs> your kids came home from school and went crazy. You don't think that you don't think that happens in the Knowles Carter household and all these images of black excellence? No, it goes back to, you know, it goes back to we what we talked about with the, the social media platforms and the feminization of them and how they like present, you know, black love as this monolithic singular image. And it's like, no, 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 no. It's why I love belief in fatherhood because they be on camera ashy. Bro, armpit hairs have grown out, you know. You know what I'm saying? Not, hair not done. Bro, like, in between cuts. In between cuts. Like, yo, I'm, I, I ain't got it right now. I'm working. I'm busy. I can't, I'm not, I haven't gone to the barber because I don't have time. Bro. Bro. Saying, I gotta make time to do like that's that's black excellence to me is to is to experience all of that and still be able to make it work, bro. So the nights the nights where dinner didn't work, you know, like something was attempted to be made and it just didn't work. Yep. All just looking at it like we going to Chick Fil A, like you yep. know, it's that's excellent, bro. Those memories to to navigate through, just like how to figure out those moments trial and error all of that man like this there is a humanity conversation in the midst of all of this and, and black folks man i just really want us to be able to not be ashamed of our humanity you know what i'm saying like the the good times and the bad times but you know really for the sake of 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 trying to access an identity of unity like you know will we stick together or we accept the com complexities that we present out there to the public, but we don't just speak negatively about each other publicly. You know what I'm saying? Like you said with Shaq and Charles, like, look, man, just just say you disagree with him. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, I'm, I, I I disagree with what he's saying, but you call yeah. them idiots and stuff, and it's just like, yo, man, like, this is who we got. Y'all sent, y'all, it just looks like y'all sent in the heavy ar artillery. Sent sent them in and Kenny's just over there like don't want to listen to me anyway so whatever <laughs> <laughs> I, I ain't saying nothing because I kind of agree with like you are he's just got his head down like look I, but he's I the one here from the most because he's actually close to Kyrie like their camp is mm. they're all close knit so mm. I wanted to hear from him the most mm. and clearly you know he wasn't driving the bus you know what I'm saying I, like that's that's what we're left with. Absolutely. The other aspect, and I see it in, in the comments, is that we haven't even talked about like the exploitation of the Black experience okay. and how that affects uh, our inability to present honestly. 
yeah, there's there's so much with that because there's I don't again I talked I talked to you about the uh, the show Atlanta. Um, mm -hmm. Donald Glover addresses that in the whole Tyler Perry dynamic, which I won't. Um, Just tell me what we gonna watch that we gonna watch that tonight. What episode is that? Do you know what number it is? I I don't, but I can text it to you. I can text it. Okay, to you. I bet. But but like again, we're back to the um the jewish media conversation because i just was reading a story yesterday about this guy named norman lear who's like a hollywood executive and there's another man and now this is just the effect of history the way it's told i've forgotten his name there's a man who's actually the creator of the show good times the jeff mm -hmm. and um there's another one that I'm that I'm forgetting, but mm -hmm. the shows that centered on the black family and Sanford and Sons, the other one. Okay. And so this guy created these shows, but Norman Lear took the ideas and essentially is the one who's remembered as the creator and the mm -hmm. person who facilitated a Hollywood image of the black community. And so Norman Lear did create this other show called All in the Family with Archie Bunker which is where the Jeffersons comes from. Mm -hmm. all, of that, all of that being said, there, there's, there's literal evidence of ideas being plundered from the black community, uh, talents, contributions. Eric Monty is his name. Thanks, thanks, bro. Look, that Eric Monty created those shows, an executive, I'll use Kanye's words, who, who happened to be Jewish, <laughs> <laughs> took the ideas Mm -hmm. And was even trying to eliminate the black father from the roles. Absolutely. Yep. So in good times, that was the controversy with John Amos, the father. Yep. yep. You know, he said, I'm I'm like, I'm not going to be doing all of this stuff. This is stereotypical stuff that y'all. And they just started elevating JJ more, more, and more. Mm -hmm. And that's because the original creator was forced out. And they hired all these new writers and they just started Dis dismantling the original vision of displaying a healthy black family mm -hmm. to audiences. So that's just one story, you know, from 50, from 50 years ago, from 50 years ago. But bro, they just did, uh, you know, like those live tapings of the classic shows where they brought in the, all the family people and they brought in the Jefferson people Okay, and they did yeah. live studio version. And Norman Lear was sitting there next to George, Jimmy Kimmel. And Eric Monty's nowhere to be found. Oh, of course. Nowhere to be found. Of course. And and it, he it gets to be a part of his legacy. So this is recent reimagining and just found out that they're getting ready to do an animated show of good times. Now I hope on Netflix. Now I hope Eric Monty gets paid for that. I'm going on a bunny trail. All I'm saying is, is this is actively happening in like like factual ways that we can research and be educated on. So it is not a conversation to dismiss, especially when we talk about hip hop. We talk about hip hop, forget hip hop, black soul music. We just want to talk about all of that. We just saw straight out of Compton, didn't we? I'm not going to go all the way there, bro. Like I'm just saying that there are many stories to unpack about subject matter that's been uncomfortable. And if we want to lump all of that in with black people's history back in Israel, fine. You know, we can we can do that, too, but we have to be honest at the table amongst one another and not just be subjected to these power structures that at the end of the day will compromise our voice. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? So end of the day, I'm buying the next direct to consumer Yeezy product. I'm buying I'm listening to the next album. Um, Like I'm still I'm still here. I'm not selling my shoes if Goodwill don't want them, then I'll be out front taking them for free. <laughs> and like, facts. Resell. I meant, to pull, I meant to pull up on the gap. And like, yo, what y'all doing with them long sleeves? Man, <laughs> somebody has already begun to resell them. You already know. Yeah, there's a there's an employee like, oh yeah, let me let me go ahead and holler at those. Oh, you and, already know. Yeah, yeah, we we'll make sure that they find a spot. So. End of the day, man, I, I want our I want our people to be together. I know that sounds like, you know, we are the world or whatever. But I do feel like, you know, we have an opportunity as a community to shape some identity and stand up for each other. 
even if it goes against the grain of like kind of pop culture stuff. Because the pop culture people are being exposed to me right now. Yes, they are. And it's like, ooh, who do you work for? Absolutely. Yep. 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 We have to not be in love with those things. We have to be okay with watching them die. Yep. Because they got they got to die. They got to die. And we'll be, we're going to be all right. We'll, you know, Kendrick's not going to have another album for another 10 years. So <laughs> there's so much I want to say. It's like, oh, Drake, Drake is going to distract us in a couple of weeks. <laughs> no, Friday. Oh, damn. Friday. He posted, he posted his sad RIP takeoff post. And then today, Howard Stern, Tiny Desk. We coming. One monkey don't stop no show. To to the white folks who tuned into this and and you know just may tune into it later, we still love y'all. You know it is there's there's just a lot to do in our community, and you're gonna see things you don't understand. That's that's my little asterisk disclaimer, just in case people leave with this perspective that I keep having a battle that I hate white people. I don't hate white people, man. Like <laughs> I just I just be focused on what's going on with us. Because yeah, what I'm a part of, and and white people have a a, a, a nice little stake in <laughs> in affairs that pertain to us, like they just do. This this is what happens when in 2020 when you ask us how we're doing and if we need anything. Like now you are able to eavesdrop on some of these open conversations that we're having, these dinner conversations, these barbershop conversations. Like you want to know, you really want to know. It's not blackish. It's not Tracy Ellis Ross and Anthony Anderson. It's like, not that's, elementary. <laughs> it's definitely not Abbott Elementary. It's not Quinta Brunson. No, it's not. Sorry. No, this is this is the real experience, and it's layered and it's complicated. Yeah. And we're figuring it out as we go along. Yeah. Like we don't know. We just know what we know. So we're only we're only saying that because we're Christians, and you know we just got to tell everybody we love them. And 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 I hope that I hope that, that that's received. But listen, man, I am I really love black people in our culture. Um, I don't like for us to be uh, publicly treated the way we're treated, and we got a lot of pain that we're trying to work through. So let's just keep getting better and be honest. That's all I'm saying. For sure, for sure. All right, man. Let's 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 pin it there because we, you know, me and you, we could talk for another hour and a half easy. <laughs> so. Yeah. We'll, we'll, we'll stop here. Thank you guys for tuning in. Um, make sure you, you head over to COVIDcom.us and check out our previous episodes. We've been, we've been digging at this stuff for the last two years, man. Just amazing conversations. You can watch everything from both seasons. Uh, follow us on Twitter, Instagram, whatever, whatever. Follow the official COVID community Instagram because uh, we'll be back real soon. So thank you guys. And uh, until next time. Peace.